Hi guys, this is Tina. Welcome back to my channel. So I'm just going to do, or I'm just here to do a kind of slightly, um, what is going to be probably a bit of a series on working with books in your journals. So kind of just showing the types of, um, you know, ways that you can use books and how I like to use books. And I'm not by any means trying to kind of claim to be an expert or anything like that, but just, um, yeah, thought we'd kind of come on and have a bit of a play. Um, and I say it may turn into a bit of a series because obviously there's probably quite a bit to cover. So if I kind of start by showing the types of things that I kind of look out for when I'm looking for books, and I've obviously shown, um, you know, some of these books before. I know that I've certainly um, shown this Victoria Plum book, which is just so gorgeous and I just absolutely love it. Um, and I always love it when you do find the odd thing like this lurking around in a book in a um, secondhand shop. So this type of book for me is just perfect for journals because the pictures are kind of smallish, you know, really super cute and would easily be able to kind of be incorporated onto an embellishment piece or an envelope or a collage or, you know, however you like really. Um, you know, because you could either kind of tear around it or cut around it as a kind of square piece or an oval or a circle or something. Or you could obviously fussy cut around the actual pieces themselves, you know. And it's got an abundance of those tiny pictures. So even here, for instance, where the picture is actually bigger, you've got a whole bunch of tiny creatures that could all be used as individual elements, kind of, you know, on a journal piece so you know this for me is absolutely perfect and I mean this book oh, I don't it doesn't appear to have page numbers but you know I don't know how many pages it's got but as you can see there are loads and loads and loads of pictures so I mean this would easily do way more than one journal um, you know loads and loads and loads and loads you could get from this one book so something like this is just you know absolutely ideal if you can kind of find anything kind of quite like this really so this is the Victoria Plum annual I know I have shown it before but you know um, I just wanted to kind of emphasize this how ideal it is I mean look at these gorgeous pictures here so we're going to kind of work with this in this um, little series so this one is copyright 1981 so if anyone wanted to kind of um you know have a look for this kind of same book that's this one then other types of books that i quite like are i've got a few of these enid blyton books and these as you can see they're these kind of illustrations they're in black and white or black and not white but the book the book page color um which I find these really nice. I mean, for a start, they're really lovely illustrations. Um, you know, not all of them. Some of them, some of them are nicer than others. But I mean, on the whole, they're really nice illustrations. They're a range of sizes through these kinds of books. So again, we've got some larger ones, but obviously we've got lots and lots of small ones as well that again could be used kind of really nicely on embellishment pieces. But what I quite like about these is the fact that they're kind of all neutral, you know, monotone kind of illustrations. You can then couple them with any bits that you like. Whereas kind of the Victoria Plum one, if I kind of just pull that back. For instance, you know, I've just opened it on this page. If I were to use this illustration, I would feel I needed to kind of somehow coordinate it against the greens and the yellows and things in this illustration. Um, or, you know, if I was using kind of clashing colours, but they'd have to clash properly, <laughs> if you see what I mean. Um, you know, I wouldn't, for instance, maybe use, I don't know, purple, say, on this. Um, you know, I'd go with either something very complimentary or something clashy, but in a kind of good way. Um, whereas, obviously, these illustrations here, I could go with any colour I like, because obviously anything is going to kind of look good against this because there is no colour to it um you know if I just kind of grab literally a couple of things from around my desk to kind of illustrate that whatever I put against this is going to look good so you know if you see kind of books like this in the shops don't be deterred thinking oh it's a bit colourless or you know they're not very interesting 
because sometimes I actually think these are the best illustrations to kind of work with because then you're not limited and restricted at all. So that's that one and these are the Enid Blyton books. So I have used these before. Um, I did a Mr Pink Whistle journal which is somewhere on my channel and another one which I can't actually remember the name of. Um, but anyway, they're both on my channel. So um, these are always quite good ones to look out for and they tend to be from kind of the 70s or thereabouts. Yeah, this one's 1971. Um, so if you wanted to kind of look out for any of those kinds of books, that's those. And then some other books that I find really quite fun to work with are, I was lucky enough to pick up um, these children's encyclopedias. So this is children's encyclopedia. I don't know what the copyright is um, of this. Let me see if I can find a date. Oh, I don't think I can. And as you can see, I've already started tearing pages out of here. So, right, I might not be able to find a date, but if I just kind of show you what I quite like about these is a lot of the pictures are again the smaller size which are just absolutely perfect for lending themselves to kind of using on kind of journal pieces so you get the odd larger picture but a lot of them are small and obviously these being encyclo being encyclopedias are um a whole different variety of subjects so you know even if they're not necessarily kind of things that you might want to use there's going to be something for everybody so I mean for instance here I've got these beautiful pictures of Ireland and it's got all these gorgeous pictures here but what I really like is you know I love my architecture so there's all these tiny kind of pictures of these gorgeous historic buildings. I mean, look at this fantastic building. I mean, I haven't been to Ireland, so I'm showing my kind of ignorance here. Um, but you've got here the High Street in Belfast. And, you know, it looks like kind of Victorian times or something. Um, the Bank of Ireland in Dublin. They're beautiful buildings. So I love using things like this kind of on my pieces. So, you know, these are kind of brilliant books for sourcing unusual things so I love kind of obviously the buildings um you know as I've just said I'm just going to kind of bookmark that because um in case we kind of work on that in a moment so I love the buildings um also what is contained in here we have odd pages of kind of rhymes and things which tend to be kind of in these other colors so um I don't know what the word is for not monotone, but when it's like three colours. So again, they have lovely images. So again, really, really nice to use in your journals. And then you've got some kind of um, more like machinery and, you know, um, the uh, like industrial um, times and things, which are also really kind of, you know, awesome images that I know that lots of people really enjoy that kind of thing. So you know there's those types of things you've got vehicles again really nice really kind of lovely things I mean again you've got images like this which are just absolutely lovely you know really like using those but the other thing that I especially really like are all these gorgeous images they tend to be of men um, because obviously of the time you know men were kind of more renowned I guess than women at the time um, but I love these kind of small pictures that it has of kind of um, men from history because they're just perfect again for using on tags and in your journals so you get lots of those kinds of things and the other thing that you get is galleries of art they call them and just flukely I actually managed to flick to a gallery of art just then um so again you've got these gorgeous images that you can use again in your journals you know, these smaller ones, just perfect for kind of on an embellishment piece. Large ones, perfect for kind of just folding and popping into a pocket or kind of paper clipping onto a page. Um, and obviously a variety of kind of subjects and things like that. And these particular encyclopedias seem to have multiple um, of the same categories, if you see what I mean. So we've got an art section here and then just flick through the book a little bit more and you've got another gallery of art here with again more gorgeous images you know and in different color tones so these are kind of much more kind of grayish these are obviously much more your sepia kind of images 
So, you know, really, really useful. And then in these particular encyclopedias, you just get the odd couple of pages that are in colour. I mean, this here, this is the British seaweed family. So, I mean, you know, this isn't necessarily kind of something that I would use, but, you know, I'm sure it is something that lots of people would use. And, you know, there's no getting away from it. The images are in gorgeous colours. Um, even if the theme isn't quite kind of, you know, what I would kind of necessarily, you know, be drawn to. Um, so you just get the odd page, really, that's coloured. Um, here we've got a section with kind of railway images, which I've used um, similar images to these in a journal recently. I can't think which journal it was. But, you know, again, these are really fun images. You know, these small ones, they're really fun images to kind of use in your journals. So... You know, these, I think, are really awesome books. So if you can kind of ever get things like this, you know, they're brilliant. And I have actually seen these around, you know, quite frequently. So, you know, they're obviously, um, you know, quite commonplace, certainly over here in the UK. Here, again, another one of the coloured kind of sections of these gorgeous birds. So, you know, you've got kind of a big variety of... Um, things to use in your journals in these. So those were kind of the books, you know, with images that I really quite like to use. Um, other books that I, you know, managed to pick up, and I think I might have shown some of these before, so I apologise if this is kind of a bit of a repeat. I've got this one, a postage stamp catalogue, which again, is really interesting images to kind of just have as backgrounds. I mean, as you can see, I've kind of torn out pages, you know, in here quite a bit already. Um, but they're really great for using to just kind of, you know, fill a space on an embellishment piece or just in a background of a page or something and just add a bit of interest to the page. I like the way the text is, you know, in these kind of columns. It's really, um, you know, makes it kind of interesting to look at. And obviously, you know, the whole book is full of all these lovely images just in these kind of, you know, um, monochromatic um colour schemes you know so effectively would kind of just tie in with most of your journals so again you know really handy kind of book to have so this one is the Stanley Gibbons postage stamp catalogue this one's dated 1956 so there's that one um another book that I was really lucky to pick up this is the navy list um that they're calling this it's spring of 1972 and Again, isn't this just such an awesome kind of record, basically? Um, it's got kind of, obviously, the uh, members kind of of the, uh, like, the offices here and things like that. And then I think somewhere it actually had kind of the um, boats and things like that, I thought it had listed. Well, it's got, it's got a variety of things. I now can't find the sections that I was actually looking for, but it's got a whole section or a whole variety of sections with various different kind of logs and information and records and things like that from history, which, you know, is really kind of interesting. And it's interesting in how it's laid out. So kind of rather than it just being a blank page of text, you've got an interesting format to your text. So, I mean, anything like this is really fun to be able to kind of use in your journals. And you've got a variety of sizes of the font and styles of font and things like that. So I just think things like, you know, things like this, it's a bit like your dictionary pages, anywhere where there's a little bit of kind of variety in how the style of the text is, is always going to kind of make for quite interesting uses. Um, you know, so that's another one that I, that I, you know, was really lucky to have managed to pick up. So I just put that to one side. Um, the other one with images is, I love these ladybird books and obviously I've talked about these before. I've shown them before. Um, so just to kind of quickly, you know, um, just talk about these, I suppose. Really love these. They are the most gorgeous images and, you know, I think I've said this before, this particular book I even had as a child. So, you know, this one's kind of really special for me. My only kind of thing to just kind of bear in mind with these books, 
they are very large images because they tend to be a kind of page of text with a page of an image. It's a large image. So if you're going to use it, you know, on an embellishment piece, you're going to end up trimming it down and you're going to lose quite a bit of the image. So it's just something to kind of be aware of is that these are sometimes trickier to use. Although the images are stunning and, you know, really gorgeous to look at, they're going to possibly cause you a bit more trouble kind of getting them to fit onto, you know, your pieces. So something to bear in mind. So that's that one. And then, of course, you know, we've all got tons of just normal, or, you know, what I would call just boring kind of um, vintage books that we just can use for, you know, a variety of things. So, you know, this is just text. This is just, you know, a book that I picked up. They were chucking it out at work. Um, it's not hugely vintage. It's probably from the 50s or the 60s. I can't actually find a date on it, but... Yeah, you know, so, but just with your kind of plain text, and again, I've got kind of a variety of books, you know, just for that reason. Obviously, you know, subjects vary and things like that. It's kind of handy if they're quite a neutral theme. I mean, this is kind of um, children in music, or music in children, sorry. So hopefully there would be nothing kind of offensive. I do quite often use the Reader's Digest books, but obviously they're slightly can be slightly sensitive in nature of um, subjects. You know, sometimes they kind of have a, you know, violent kind of element or maybe kind of a religious kind of um, element, things like that. So just, you know, something to kind of be aware for of, I suppose, really. Um, you know, it's handy to just have sometimes some quite neutral themed, you know, books in your collection. So, that was kind of just a bit of an overview, really, of the types of books, really, that can be handy and the, you know, the types of uses that they can have. So I guess really, um, you know, that kind of is about it. Obviously, Patricia Veramontes, and I will link her below, um, provided I remember, which hopefully I will. Um, she is the kind of queen of the book page pockets. So, you know, her pockets are brilliant and worth checking out her videos for you know fantastic uses of how to kind of make brilliant pockets and envelopes and everything else from your neutral pages and then obviously you know you can kind of decorate them up with bits that that you want really so let's go on in and um start kind of having a bit of a play okay so i thought we'll start by doing some pieces from the victoria plum um annual because i just can't wait to use them really I've been hoarding this book for the longest time and it's, um, you know, it's about time that I, that I actually get round to, um, you know, or stop, stop hoarding it and actually kind of use it. So what I've done is torn out the first, you know, kind of um, story type page. And if you can see, I've got kind of two smallish images. I've obviously got this section here, but I've also got this small image and this small image. So all I'm going to do first is tear around this smallish image from the bottom. So I'll just kind of tear that out. <clears throat> and then obviously, as you can see, I've still got this one intact that we can kind of use in a minute for some other, um, you know, decorative bits and bobs. So I've just taken, um, this is just some of my Grand Lazuli uh, background papers. I've only picked these because obviously they have picked up the blue from the book. So, you know, it's just a case of going through your kind of paper stacks or, you know, your um, the background papers that you happen to have. And just finding anything, really, that you think is going to look good and complement your pictures. <clears throat> <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a bit of a frog in my throat today. So... As you can see, I've got kind of obviously a floral type section here, or I've obviously got kind of a plainer side here. So, you know, up to um, you obviously kind of the types of things that you do. So I might just cut a section down here. And I'll try and get as much of that flower in as I can, but obviously it's not. Essential. Now I've made a 
hideous job of cutting that, so I need to neaten that up because it's uh, very, very, very wonky. Okay, that's a bit better. And then obviously I've got my little piece. So I might have the piece kind of down here so that I've got these flowers kind of in the background because to me that just, you know, really ties in really perfectly with that. Obviously there's lots of text on this book. So for my, you know, if I wanted to kind of build it up with some kind of book page text, I could use some of this. It's kind of bigger font because obviously it's a child's book. But it's that lovely kind of, um, you know, typewriter -y looking text, which I really quite like. Having said that, now I've popped that on there. I'm not quite sure that I like that so much, so I might not go for that. <clears throat> but then obviously you can just build it up with kind of whatever you want. So I just happen to have this little ye <coughs> yellow flower here to the side. So I could just kind of pop that on. This is just from an old paper pack that I, you know, have had for kind of absolutely years and years. I've got some fabric here. Again, it was just laying around on my desk, so we could kind of incorporate that somewhere. Just cut that down. Oops. Again, this is where kind of having that messy desk is just coming in so handy because I've just got rubbish just everywhere that you know can often be quite inspiring really so we can have it like that I have got some eyelash trim here which we could incorporate because um obviously she's got a purple dress I'm not sure whether for me that's kind of a little bit too clashy I'm not sure yeah that's maybe a bit much for me there or perhaps the yellow is a bit much. I'm just going to have a look. I've got to the side some of my little, um, you know, fabric ruffles that I've stitched. So if I just pull a couple of those in. And these are just my hand stitched ones, not my kind of machine stitched large ruffles. But I like using these little hand stitched ones when I'm using, um, or when I'm working with the, children's books because I just think they're really fun and I have got again a couple of purple ones so I'll just kind of keep those here as well because obviously you know her dress has got that purple on it so they're not outside the realms of possibility so I'll put those back okay right let's have a look just checking whether that's up the right way or not. So I'm going to take the eyelash trim out, I think. Let's have a look and see what else we've got. I've got here a little butterfly that we could use. I have got a butterfly here that's yellow, so let me just try cutting that out. <coughs> going through this weird phase at the moment where I've kind of got out of the habit of inking things um, you know I've preferred things often recently not inked and kind of made to look so vintage and it's so strange because you only have to not do it for a few weeks or a few times and it's so weird how quickly you get out of that um, you know the confidence of being able to then ink things because now I'm back at that oh gosh you know do I dare ink it is it going to ruin it kind of stage which is just really strange I'm not quite sure you know why that happens quite so quickly as it does but definitely that does seem to to happen I'm just having a look like this I quite like that like that I think yeah, let's go for that. So I'll just pop that butterfly on there. And we're going to pop our 
bit piece down. So I still can't decide now whether to actually um, ink these pieces or not. That was where I was actually going with that when I started rambling on about the the inking or not not inking. So I'm going to trim this down slightly because for me this is a little bit kind of bulky and large. So I think that's kind of throwing me a little bit. So just cut it down a bit. And then I'm just going to rough it up a bit at the edges. So this is where I think I will ink it because obviously once my edges are kind of ruffled, they look a little bit white. So I will, I will ink it. Right. Throw these away. Now, I have got the um, my new ink pad that I bought the other day, which was the honey colour. Can't remember now. Wild honey. I don't know what that would look like against that blue. So I'm going to just try a bit of that and just have a look and see what that would look like. Because that to me just picks up her, um, you know, the background of the piece. So I'm just going to kind of ink around it, I think, with that colour. I'm not going to go all over the piece, but just kind of around the edge. Because that just kind of picks up that colour on the actual book itself. So really looking cute now. Glad that I kind of went for that one actually. And then we can have this here. Uh, whoops. And then we can have kind of this purple one kind of just coming off to the side I think kind of nice and actually I wish that I had inked up that butterfly so I'm just going to kind of try and ink it up after the after the event which not ideal and obviously I should have done that first but there we go. just kind of you know there we go that looks a bit better doesn't it so I'm going to just pop this fabric down here Still persevering with this fabric glue. I know I'm constantly talking about this glue, but I'm still <laughs> still undecided. So, right, we're popping that one there. And then we're just going to have this one kind of just, you know, hanging off the page a little bit. So, I'm just going to kind of glue it like that. Just see whether it needs kind of a bit more glue to kind of hold it on. Just like that. Okay, and then, <clears throat> although I'm very bad for not using buttons, you know, I buy them all the time and then don't particularly use them, I do love using them when I use kind of kids' pages, kids' book pages. Oops. So I've got my little vintage button. Um, you know, sack here to the side. So I'm just going to see whether I've got anything that I think looks quite cute on here. I mean, that looks cute, but I'd have to have it kind of hanging off, I think. Oops. Those. The other one's a little bit on the large side, which is a shame because colour wise it's just perfect. Right, yellow one. Put that green. Ah, got a kind of smaller yellow one there. That might be ideal. Mm, that's a bit too green. Right. Okay. So let's have a look. We should have just a 
couple of buttons here like that. Or we could have oops, a blue one. Again, that's one of those ones with a thingy. And to be honest, it doesn't resemble a button overly much. So I don't think we'll go for that one. Perhaps we'll go for those two. Again, you know, I don't want to be here all day just picking the buttons because how boring for you guys. So just pop that on there. It's got a big dob of glue just dropped off into the buttons. And then just pop this one on like that oh so cute so super cute really easy kind of little piece just working with some of those kind of children's book pieces now I'm just having a look to the side to see whether I have a blank journal which I normally do but oh I have let me just grab it to show you how that would look on a page so hold on, bear with me. So like that, that's how that would look kind of in a journal. Really, really cute. Let me just bring that up to the camera quickly. Really, really cute. And this was printed on 160 GSM card, so it's kind of thicker. Obviously, if you were worried about the, um, you know, the thickness of it, what you could do is just reinforce this by just gluing it onto, you know, even just some book page like that or pop it on some book page and just stitch around the edge and then that's kind of reinforced that and then it just makes it slightly more robust for kind of going into your, your journal pages. So that's kind of, you know, uh, an example, I guess, of using um, some of the images from the children's books. So I don't know what time we're actually up to now because I've stopped and started the video several times. But, you know, that's probably enough for today. Um, and I will see you next time for more kind of using our books and um, ways to use our books. So hope that you enjoyed the uh, video and I will see you all again soon. Thanks then. Bye.